Okay, this presentation is to give you an overview on how the topics of sustainable food systems and sustainable diets are linked to international initiatives and how they are methodologically embedded into a food system approach. I structured the lecture in that I will start with connecting the topics to the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals as well as to the new concepts dietary concept of United Nations organizations. And then I will screen through scientific literature on food systems, as this system approach needs basic understanding for dealing with the topic of the course. And finally, I will put the findings together so that hopefully a picture will emerge for your own understanding. I describe the intended learning outcomes with focus on a food system approach, as well as the ability to connect the different perspectives, food, sustainability, and health. Recently, the United Nations described the 17 sustainability goals, the so-called SDGs. A detailed description is available. And here I put together those SDGs where our topic is connected with. Number 12, Ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Number four, it's about education. Number two, end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Number three, it's about healthy lives. And number 17, it's about global partnerships for sustainable development. From the goals to the problems, <clears throat> why these goals were established. Our current food system causes several environmental and social problems. And the huge loss in biodiversity is one of the most challenging, representing here by these empty fields. At the same time, our food consumption patterns lead to several food-based diseases, where obesity is one of the most challenging, and this is connected to the so-called non-communicable diseases. Our global food problem related to food is that we have nearly 800 people still suffering from chronic undernourishment, but double to deal with overweight and obesity. And especially in the developing countries, we have the relatively new phenomenon of the double burden in malnutrition, what means that we have obesity and malnutrition, undernourishment at the same time, at the same place, at the same people. The linkage between food production and food consumption is obvious when you check the new dietary concepts from the United Nations Organization, the World Health Organization, WHO, and the World Agriculture Organization, FAO. Interestingly, both refer to a system approach and whereas the WHO comes from the human health perspective to the problem, the FAO comes from the agriculture and food perspectives. The W HO defines food systems that they include all the components along the chain, production, processing, distribution, and they should be sustainable, resilient and efficient in providing more diverse food in an equitable manner with due attention to assessing environment and health impacts. So the first time that the WHO is including a food system approach, assessing not only the health impacts, but also the impacts on environment. And there are recommendations for a sustainable food system. The sustainable diets concept from FAO is defining sustainable diets as those diets with low environmental impacts, which contribute to food and nutrition security and to healthy life for present and future generations. Sustainable diets are protective and respectful of biodiversity and ecosystems, culturally acceptable, accessible, economically fair and affordable nutritionally adequate, safe and healthy, while optimizing natural and human resources. As most of you are from Europe, here is the new EU food research document referring to a food system approach, taking into account the complexity of food systems, as well as recommending 
to take all three dimensions of sustainability into account and not reducing to one. So this is a kind of blueprint for the EU Research Agenda Frame 2020. Now you heard several times the term food system, but what makes a system different from a product or chain approach? How can we describe what we mean when we talk about food systems? First, we need a food system concept. Second, the system needs boundaries. Boundaries in which different elements are connected on different levels. Elements can be the actors along the food chain, but also education. The system transforms. It's in transformation from inputs to outputs. An output can be the impact of food production and consumption on environment or on human health. Taking a system approach, we need to work across scientific disciplines and sectors. Next, we need to visualize the food system as this will give us more insights and understandings, for example, of how elements are connected as well as how they are linked to the different dimensions or scales. This figure is from a report from food scientists in US. The report intends to give the system concept of a US food system. This is also towards food policymakers. So you can see the field to fork chain as well as the dimensions. All are part of a food system and working with this concept means to take all these into account. So you cannot separate, for example, when developing guidelines for food consumption or regulations for food productions, just one of the elements. A basic characteristics of food systems is that they are in development. So the transformation is important. We can focus on different aspects for the system, such as the interactions. So looking at, for example, farmer consumer relations, I will give an example later or on the outcomes, so how the food production and consumption touches climate change. Thinking in Systems, this is a title from the last book written by Meadows, one of the members of the Club of Rome, asking for working with the term integrity, the integrity of the system. So it's a holistic approach where the whole is more than just summing up the parts. Differentiating between types of systems and for each type define the function or the purpose, for example, to produce and consume without destroying nature. And define the boundaries. We do that by taking the questions we have. So the question is one of the starting points and defines how we work with the system. This is very important to take into account. Defining your question and then your approach and this will be necessarily reduce the complexity to a working level. You think this is maybe just a scientific problem? It's not. What I could just show with the United Nations and EU policy frameworks. Here's another example. FAO and UNEP developed the Sustainable Food System program and defined food systems through elements, activities and outputs or outcomes. And they link sustainability with nutrition and food security. The course will put together food systems, sustainable diets, especially organic food. The just mentioned sustainable food system program of the United Nations took organic food systems as models for transformation processes to make food systems more sustainable. The organic food system program has been developed since beginning of 2015 in order to contribute to the SDGs from the organic perspective. More than 80 partners from 35 countries joined so that the organic food system models can be taken and investigated under very different conditions, different boundaries from culture and geography. One important element of this program is the exchange of information and knowledge via web, but also when meeting people personally. Here's an example from the Danish organic food system. The company Aristiderne acts as a platform for farmer-consumer relationships. 
With the Greenback concept, they bring 200 farmers and 55,000 families together through organic food with a recipe. It's so successful that they currently reach 250,000 organic meals every week. There are other examples for that for the farmer-consumer that are the elements of the system relationships within organic food systems such as the community supported agriculture. But what makes it important? In my opinion it's the consciousness. It helps to enhance the consciousness of the consumers to include to be aware of how our daily food is produced. So from the outputs from the relations to the outputs or the outcomes. The very essential question is how to measure. This figure shows you the different dimensions. Health, economy, environment, society, culture. As you may know, in Paris the governments signed the big declaration on how to stop climate change. And this is based on the policy instrument of CO2 emission and temperature. It was a long process where scientists put together knowledge and come up with a manageable instrument for the praxis or the policy makers. So far okay. But can we also reduce a food system on just one of the dimensions, just environment, just measuring CO2 emissions? Would that maybe be a way to ban animal husbandry and compost as they very much contribute to CO2 emissions? Or do we need to, to put other, also other dimensions into account, such as society and culture and health aspects? So that's very important to come from the dimensions to concrete measurements. And this is an urgent problem. We should discuss that. Thank you very much for your attention. And please do not hesitate to contact me.